Welcome to All In, October 13th, 2021. I'm Matthew Wu. The biggest story for our area remains the recovery from Hurricane Ida. After Hurricane Ida hit, Nickel State University suffered some serious damages. The university mostly recovered and reopened on September 27th. Talbot Hall, Harold J. Calais Recreation Center, and Scholars Hall suffered little to no damage. Io Pool, Elkins Hall, The Quad, Donald G. Bollinger Memorial Student Union, and one of the parking lots were impacted. Most of the damage around campus was to trees. Around Elkins Hall, trees had fallen, leaving large branches to be cut and removed. Fencing was blown down around Io Pool. The area around and the Io Pool building suffered damage also. One of the parking lots also had some fence damage. The quad and the student union had fallen trees as well. Since the storm, Nichols has worked hard to recover the fencing, is repaired, and the debris is gone. There are no leaves or branches blocking past the class. The surrounding areas are not as far along in their recovery. Many students, faculty, and staff have made Nickel State University their home away from home. Nickel sets a deadline on COVID vaccinations and, randomly is, and is randomly selecting students to be tested. Nickel State has joined many universities in Louisiana who have implemented COVID-19 vaccination guidelines on their campuses. Public universities were able to release statements about their vaccination guidelines after the Food and Drug Administration approved the COVID-19 vaccine community, known as the Pfizer vaccine. Vaccination guidelines have left students at Nichols and other universities scrambling to decide if they will receive the vaccination or deal with the other rules that have been set in place. At Nichols, Guidelines are not the same, but similar to schools like LSU, Loyola, and Tulane, as they are requiring students to take vaccines, but students have an option to opt out if they do not want to take a vaccine. The Louisiana National Guard is administering free rapid tests in the leader suite weekdays from 10 a.m. to 4 p.m., according to Director of Communications, Jared Davis. Students who are not vaccinated will be randomly selected for testing, and they will have 72 hours to upload a negative COVID test to the patient portal after the are selected. Random COVID testing is not a problem for students who are not vaccinated because that gives them a chance to keep the campus safe as well as students who have decided to take the vaccine. It is important that Nickel students submit their records for opting out of the vaccine or taking it by October 25th so they can be admitted to register for their classes during the registration period. Xavier University have more strict policies for their students because they could only opt out of getting the vaccine for medical and religious reasons if they did not stay on campus. Any student who did not meet the requirements were prompted to re-enroll for the spring 2022 semester. The University of New Orleans policies mimics the city of New Orleans policies in certain buildings like the fitness and rec center because the New Orleans community uses those buildings as well. The universities have strict guidelines, but Nickel students have options. They can either submit a letter of dissent or they can get a COVID vaccination. Reporting with All In, this has been Shannon Ross. Parking on Nichols campus has been cramped with the National Guard and others. Ida recovery related groups taking parking spots. Trinice Cannon takes a look. As classes resume here at Nichols, both commuter students and residential students are having troubles finding parking. I was able to get a few words from commuter student Julia Nunez about her experiences with parking. Um, this week it took me about 20 to 30 minutes to find a parking spot and it was a mile and a half away from my building it felt like. I have gotten a ticket for parking. It was for parking in the dorm uh, parking lot, but there was no other parking spot, so I had to park there and I, or I was gonna be late to class. Um, I think there needs to be more student parking and less faculty parking around the buildings and maybe have a faculty lot. Um, but I was not happy when I had my ticket because that's $50. I think uh, the university police could do warnings first instead of doing tickets first maybe, and then I think the university could be a little bit more lenient because commuters do sometimes have struggle finding parking spots like me, and so sometimes it's hard. Various commuter students even took the situation to social media platforms, such as Facebook and Twitter, where they expressed their concerns and thoughts about parking. Over the past week, many parking spots on campus have been temporarily filled by guests who are in need of housing and other necessities, and other guests helping those in need due to Hurricane Ida. I was able to get a few words from University Police Chief Alexander Barnes where he was able to bring light to the situation. We currently have um, 
a base camp or tent city as referring to it that housed uh, first responders, National Guard, um, and, and relief workers um, from Hurricane Ida that have been occupying this parking lot here by the stadium, the two lots here by Ayo Hall, and lot 12, which is here um, next to Little Colonel's Academy. University President Jay Clune also released a statement about parking, saying that students should arrive early to campus because there were a large number of first responders on campus. Although parking may not be accessible everywhere on campus, there is still available parking at the Rec Center, Max Charter parking lot, and there is newly available parking this week in Lot 1A, Lot 1, and parking behind Iowa Hall. Students can find more information about parking at nichols.edu slash parking or calling the office at 985-448-4746. I'm Trinice Cannon reporting for KNSU TV. A coach makes Nichols history. Coach Tim Rebo is now the winningest coach in Colonel football history. Rebo passed the late coach Sonny Jackson, who led the Colonels in the 80s. Rebo earned his record-breaking 40th win against Houston Baptist University. The victory came before a crowd at home. The Colonels beat the Huskies 48-17. The record-breaking moment took longer than expected due to multiple rain delays. He can get win number 41 against the Southeastern Lions this Saturday at home. Stay tuned for Nichols housing and enrollment numbers. After Hurricane Ida wrecked the Nichols community, Housing on campus fills up from Hurricane Ida refugees. KNSU TV's Hannah Robert reports. After Hurricane Ida wrecked the Nichols community, the Office of Resident Living wanted to offer their services to anyone who needed it. SGA President Tyler Lignong told Nichols Housing that they found out through the survey that the Acadian villas and other apartments evicted Nichols students, faculty, and staff. Um, and it's just been everything that we could do to provide for them, um, we, we provided an accommodation for them in that way. There are currently 140 to 150 Nichols students, faculty, and staff, along with their family members and pets displaced on campus. Code said that they are not bound by the same contract other Nichols residents are. The displaced residents can leave whenever they're ready. No time limit was put into place. Um, because we know that each person's need is different and we want to be sensitive to that. Andrew Lee, a junior double major in multinational business and marketing, returned to his childhood home in Chauvin to find it damaged and uninhabitable. So he was left without a place to stay after also being evicted from the Acadia Villas and finding his home destroyed. Lee filled out this survey and was offered a dorm in Zerang Hall, where he stays now. Uh, yeah, I pretty much didn't have anywhere else to go after they kicked us out of uh, Acadia Villas. Nichols Housing had 260 available beds, according to Alex Code, that they offered to displaced students, faculty, and staff, and their families that had a need for it. So we are happy to 
give them a home for right. however long they need. Uh, I'm just really thankful that Nichols even uh, reached out to me and said that they had a place for me to stay because if I wasn't staying in a dorm, I, I really don't know where I'd be right now because my house is destroyed and uh, I'd probably be on the streets right now, but I'm just really thankful that Nichols gave me this opportunity. There are still room availabilities to anyone affiliated with Nichols that is in need of housing. Contact the Office of Resident Living at housing at nichols.edu or at 985-448-4479 for housing needs. Nichols Housing was happy to contribute to the Hurricane Ida relief efforts by opening their doors to Nichols' people and their pets. This is Hannah Robert with KNSU TV. Nichols loses almost 500 students for the fall semester. Enrollment is now down 8% to 6,239 students. Nichols blames the drop in enrollment on Hurricane Ida and COVID. Nichols State President Jay Kloon said, We saw this coming, and we understand it is a difficult time to be a student in South Louisiana right now. Nichols Online continues to grow despite Hurricane Ida and COVID. Enrollment increased to 590 students this fall. Nichols may be facing their own problems, but Dr. Kloon expressed that he wants the community to know that Nichols is here for them. The Lady Colonel's soccer team has had a rough go of it lately. New soccer coach Robert Podine has a plan to turn things around. Brandon Thomas from KNSU TV's Inside Athletics talked with Coach Podine. Soccer club is sitting at 0 and 12. Correct. So, um, you know, you're known to turn around different programs and mm -hmm. things like that. Just talk about what goes on off the field with the players and trying to get them connected before you get on the field, before you play a match. Well, the big thing when you when you take over a program, uh, the first year is always the hardest, mm -hmm. uh, you know, because you're you're kind of dealing with, you know, as I say, the hand that you're dealt mm -hmm. and, and what's there. You've got to make them the best they can be, and you've got to start kind of building the the culture and the um, the tradition and the foundation for the program moving forward. Right. Uh, you know, it's you know, no matter what you do, um, <clears throat> you're going to have that group of players here again. Mm -hmm. Um, you know, even when you bring in additional players. So they have to set the culture and the standards for what the program is like. They get me for a year, and so I'm here to kind of help build them and develop them, so I'm going to make them the best they can be, right. um, while at the same point trying to make us a stronger team as far as chemistry, uh, unity, and, and developing that culture and that tradition within the program, teaching them how to win even though we're not winning now. Brendan Arsimov from the Nicholsworth gives an update on all things happening at your campus news magazine. Hi, I'm Brendan Arsimov, Editor-in-Chief, and welcome to What's in the Nicholsworth. This past week, we covered several stories related to Hurricane Ida as we're moving back into campus and trying to regroup with campus life and trying to kind of put the hurricane behind us right now. So we talked about housing and how a lot of families and students who were displaced are now on campus and how some of our halls even have animals in them. Um, we also talked about parking and some of the issues that the National Guard's presence has brought to campus with you know that parking lot being taken up completely for their usage. We um, are also we were able to report that the National Guard will be moving out slowly but surely and that some of those parking spaces will be able to be available for student use again um, very very soon. Something you may have noticed is that the magazines are not being replenished on a monthly basis right now. And that is because with the hurricane and COVID, we've just run into a few complications and delays. So we actually came up with a plan for the rest of the semester. We're only gonna put out one more issue of the Nicholsworth print magazine. And that issue will come out the week of homecoming. And it's actually going to be an Ida themed magazine. So in that magazine, we're gonna cover the hurricane from a scientific perspective, um, what happened to our campus and all of the areas around our campus. We're gonna also delve into student stories and that is probably the most important component of this magazine and that's what's gonna make people wanna hold on to it forever because this is a truly unique experience that we went through and it's never happened before. So, um, we really, really want as many people as possible to come forth with their stories if they're comfortable and share that with us so that we can share it you know, with all of the other students, faculty and staff on the campus. So that's the plan for the magazine moving forward. And then next semester, we will revert back to the monthly magazine. Um, this week, the Nicholsworth will be covering a few news stories as well as entertainment pieces. 
One story we're going to be covering is why the police showed up to the tailgate this past weekend and shut it down early. Another story we'll be going over is what happens when students do not get the vaccine, fill out the written dissent form, and then the university tells them that they need to be tested, but they choose not to get tested. So we'll go over what happens and what the consequences will be whenever you don't get tested when you're supposed to. We'll also be covering Breast Cancer Awareness Month um, with our story on the importance of self-examination. And we will also be covering the boat dock and its completion. I'm Brennan, and that's what's in the nickel's worth. A new report says one in four pieces of critical infrastructure in the U.S. face substantial risk of being rendered inoperable by flooding, which is something we know well in South Louisiana. The report was prepared by the First Street Foundation, which is a nonprofit research and technology group. It considers critical infrastructure to include police and fire stations, hospitals, airports, and wastewater treatment facilities. The study also found 23% of the roads in the U.S. are at risk of becoming impassable due to flooding. According to FEMA, flooding is already the most common and costly disaster in the U.S. It's expected to get worse as warmer weather due to climate change allows the atmosphere to hold more water. The most at-risk regions of the U.S. are in Louisiana and Florida. All in, we'll be right back with why college degrees might not be necessary anymore. care less about college degrees. A college degree might not be as necessary as it once was. Over the past few years, more companies have put an emphasis on skills rather than degrees. The majority of U.S. working adults don't have a four-year degree. So many companies are now hiring unlikely candidates through white-collar apprenticeship programs. That includes IBM, Bank of America, and Accenture. The programs provide on-the-job training, benefits, coaching, and access to employee yeah. Many yeah. companies Whatever say not is. requiring a degree okay. can also solve labor <laughs> shortage <laughs> issues and address bias in hiring practices. Netflix Squid Game is on its way to become the most watched show in the platform's history. The South on TV show media. is just the latest in the series of Korean content that made its way across the globe. CNN's Paula Hancock's reports. On social media, these images are everywhere. On television, I'm here with the cast of Squid Game. everyone is talking about it. Welcome. Amazon's Jeff Bezos tweeted, I can't wait to watch the show. Already hitting number one in 90 different countries on Netflix, Squid Game is a South Korean TV show where 456 debt-ridden contestants compete in childlike games for a prize of nearly $40 million. But the penalty for losing is death. 
Show creator Huang Dong-hyuk has wanted to make this show for more than a decade, but studios rejected it. When I showed it to people, a lot of them said that it was unfamiliar. It's strange and unfamiliar. What is this? What the hell is this? They said this in a negative way. South Korea already has a strong film industry with deep talent pools and large profitable studios, but its TV shows were predominantly romantic soap operas until Netflix arrived. I suddenly thought, will I be able to bring the show to life as I want it if Netflix is involved? I took that script from 10 years ago and showed it to them. Netflix said they loved it. Netflix says it has already invested some $2 billion on Asian content and will invest another half a billion on making new Korean content alone this year. I think in the past couple of years, we've seen Korean content viewing grow four times uh, in the region. Parasite. This is a this is golden age of Korean cultural exports. Korea. One win after another, music, films, TV shows, dubbed Hallyu or Korean Wave, and it's swept far beyond Asia, where it's been popular for the past two decades. Huang says that this show's message resonates around the world. The world is getting much harder to live in. Even in the last 10 years, wealth disparity is growing. Nations are facing economic strife, and the added element of the COVID pandemic has made the wealth gap even worse. Social disparity mirrored in Oscar-winning Korean film Parasite. Film experts say that content from South Korea, with its turbulent history of war and military dictatorship, traditionally carries a strong political message. Media is not just means of entertainment like in the United States or in the West, but media has been always uh, considered a very important tool for political enlightenment or political resistance. But it's not all politics. It is still relatively cheap to produce um, dramas in South Korea compared uh, in America. And the Squid Game, the, each episode cost less than $2 million, uh, which is half of the price Netflix invested in each episode of House of Cards. And the younger generation is far more open to foreign language content. If you look at those who watch Parasite, a big, big number of, of the kind of audiences or the audience that went to see Parasite in, in the United States was younger people. Um, and they were, they've been really keen to kind of break that one inch subtitle barrier. The success of Squid Game is already helping other Asian content to trend on Netflix, while other streaming platforms are looking to replicate this enormous success. Paula Hancock's CNN Seoul. For the latest in entertainment news, let's turn to David Daniel and the Hollywood Minute. TERF is an acronym. It stands for Trans Exclusionary Radical Feminist. I'm Team TERF. Netflix is standing by Dave Chappelle's latest comedy special, which some LGBTQ activists are criticizing as transphobic. The closer includes several minutes of material about trans people. Multiple outlets have published an email from Netflix co-CEO Ted Sarandos to employees, which reads in part, We don't allow titles on Netflix that are designed to incite hate or violence, and we don't believe The Closer crosses that line. Brian Adams has released the title track for his latest album, So Happy It Hurts. He says the song is about the freedom and thrill of the open road after the lockdown. The album, Adams 15th, is due out next March. Snoops, you're slouching. She's the only one that could train this dog. <laughs> Unlikely best buds Martha Stewart and Snoop Dogg are teaming up for Snoop and Martha's Very Tasty Halloween. They'll help judge a competition between three teams of bakers building massive, immersive, edible spectacles inspired by the spooky season. Snoop and Martha's Very Tasty Halloween debuts October 21st on Peacock. In Hollywood, I'm David Daniel. Queen is one of the most popular and influential bands of all time. Their music is beloved by all generations. Here is KNSU Radio with a throwback review of Queen's 1980 album, The Game. All right, welcome to our next installment of the weekly music segment. I'm Troy. And I'm Matt. And here we are reviewing Queen's 1980 album, The Game. A little throwback. I'm a huge fan of Freddie Mercury and Queen. I love them so much. They just have like the most rhythmic and just fun songs like you'll ever hear. Yeah, each song's a journey, like it's crazy. And, and the best thing about Queen, I think, is like 
their production of their songs are so good. Like it's very theatrical and cinematic. Their songs. It's like like I said, every song is a journey. You're just like taken somewhere new. Like every time, it's awesome. My favorite one is a uh, dragon dragon attack and uh, another one bites the dust. Obviously, like I really love the bass in both of those songs. Like I. I'm not one of those people who disrespects the bass player, but when it's done right, like it's probably my favorite parts of the songs a lot of the times. And John Deacon's one of the best bass players I think in music history. Like he's up there for bass players, so he's really good. And the best thing about Queen too is that all the members write the songs. It's like it's like the Beatles. Like all the Beatles, like like Paul McCartney would write a song, mm -hmm. and then Ringo would write a song. It's like in Queen, it's the same thing. Freddie Mercury would write a song. Brian May would write a song. Uh, Roger Taylor would write a song, so like they all write their own songs. It's like each member has a chance to shine, and I love that about them. That's really cool because like songwriting is a really, really, really respected talent. So like for you yeah. to not only be able to write songs but create hits like this, like that's very, very impressive. Yeah, another thing too is like the vocals. Like obviously Freddie Mercury is one of the best frontmen in history, yeah. but like the band itself can also like carry a tune. Like like in Bohemian Rhapsody, like all of them are singing in that song, the operatic section and all that. And so in Play the Game in this album, the first song. Like they do some of that too, and I just love it because it just sounds so cool and different than all the other bands out there. And I heard that like this album was different because they used a synthesizer for the first time. So yeah. that's really cool to learn too. Um, my favorites on here though, obviously, play the game, Dragon Attack, No One Bites the Dust, another obvious one. Yeah. Crazy thing about love, Rocket is probably like the one who that grabbed me that I wasn't expecting. So yeah, those are my. What's your favorite ones? I like I like play the game, like I said, and uh, Don't Try Suicide. It's 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 such an upbeat song about like. So it's weird, like, but yeah. I love it. Like the, like the riff in it, and it's just, it's really catchy. I just love it. And then uh, Save Me, which is the last song in the album, uh, is really good too. I love that song too. Like, it's it's a really good album. I feel like this album is like not their most famous album. Obviously, Another One Bites the Dust and Crazy Little Thing Called Love came off this album, two mega hits. But like, like no one talks about the other songs on this album. Like, <laughs> it's kind of one of the forgotten ones, I feel yeah. like. But it's really good. Like, all the Queen stuff is good, so. Yeah, this is one of those, like, you're, if you're commuting, like, if you got a 30-minute drive, play this album, you will love it, I promise you. Top tier. Yeah, yeah it's really good. Yeah. A rating? Yeah. It's a 9, 9 out, of, 9 out of 10. 9 out of 10 rating. I think I'd give it probably 8.5. Mm. I saw it 8.5. Oh, yeah. It's a must, must, must. So, yeah. yeah. Anyways, thank you for joining us on this week's uh, weekly music segment. I'm Troy, once again. And I'm Matt. We'll see y'all later. The latest movie in the terrifying saga of Michael Myers and Laurie Strode heads to theaters this week. Rick Domagella looks at the cinematic history of Halloween. John Carpenter's Halloween arrived in theaters in 1978 and has continued to scare audiences through sequels, spin-offs, and reboots. Halloween was, you know, kind of a descendant of Psycho and Black Christmas, but Halloween became the standard. It became the movie that all other horror directors, horror writers aspired to do. There's a reason we're supposed to be afraid of this thing. Universal Pictures revived the franchise in 2018 with a direct sequel to the 1978 film, ignoring the other movies released over the decades. It's an interesting thing, and I've, I've heard the term choose your own adventure, if you remember those books from when you were a kid, because if you want to see the Laurie Strode Laurie Strode film, you can watch, you know, the first film and then go to 2018 and Halloween Kills. Uh, if you want to see Dan Daniel Harris and Jamie Lloyd and her story, you could watch four, f four and five. And well, I mean, I guess you can watch six, but you're going to be sadly disappointed. Director David Gordon Green's Halloween Kills picks up moments after his 2018 film. I love Michael Myers and I love the, the mythology the very scattered mythology in the series. I think David Gordon Green has elevated this series. We're caring about the characters again. They're not just the stereotypical teenager, the slut, the jock, the the whatever you have. These are these these feel like real people. Forty years ago, the boogeyman came for us. We are the survivors of Michael Myers. Watching with the lights on in Hollywood, I'm Rick Damagella. A very important member of our team is moving on. Brandon Thomas has the story. Goodbye, Marnia. Those words none of us at the Colonel Media Group or the Nickel State University Department of Mass Communication ever wanted to say. 
Ms. Monier has looked after us and pushed every student that walked into her office for the last seven years. The mutual respect and love was evident as the staff of the Nicholsworth, La Pirogue, and KNSU TV and radio said goodbye. Even as she is leaving, Ms. Monier has some words of advice for us. Don't let anybody stop you, anything stop you. You'll end up me. Be true journalists. Report the truth. Don't go after the money, because sometimes money will just tear you up. Your character, your integrity, your values, because you pursued money and compromised your integrity. Don't do it. Be the journalist, the best journalist you can be. As important as she was to the students, she was even more important to the faculty in the mass communications. Monia has been like a surrogate mother, always looking out for the students' best interests, pushing them. Uh, she pushes us, she pushes the faculty, and all the things she does for us, I don't know how we're going to get along without her. But more importantly, all the things we don't even know that she does that we're going to find out. We're going to find out exactly how much Monia did for us as uh, we're going to have to you know, you know, go on without her. I think marnia has been here seven years and so have I. So I've never known a time before Marnia, and I'm afraid to know a time without Marnia, we're going to miss her. She always listened. You know, people can hear what you're saying, but Marnia listens. And we're gonna miss that about Marnia because, you know, we look forward to passing by, saying hello and having a conversation and sitting in that green chair and talking to somebody who listened to you. I would like to say a personal goodbye to Miss Marnia and thank you. Good luck as you move into your next adventure. You will be missed. Goodbye, Marnia. Goodbye, Marnia. That's all for today's All In. I'm Matthew Oob. See you next Wednesday or whenever you watch the stream. Have a great week.